In this video, you are going to learn the easiest way to construct a septic tank from start to finish. As a civil engineer by profession, this method that I'm about to show you is the best because your septic tank will never leak, no smell, no overflow. You are guaranteed that your septic tank will never need pumping. With this trick that I'm about to show you, your septic tank will never get clogged, meaning you'll never have any costly repairs. We are going to break down the whole process into 10 easy steps that literally anyone can understand with the last steps being the most important ones. So be sure to watch this video till the end because you don't want to miss this. The major materials required when building a septic tank include bricks. Use clay bricks to build the walls because they have a low water absorption rate. Cement. I recommend using SEM2 cement rather than SEM4 because SEM2 is stronger. Sand, aggregates, steel bars, hoop iron, timber for foam work, nails, waterproofing powder or liquid and binding wire. You will also need a heavy duty pipe and also hard core to fill in the sock pit. The first step when building a septic tank is to do excavation and we excavate the pit depending on the number of users. For example, this house is for 8 users and to be on a safer side, we excavated a pit that can even accommodate up to 20 users. The dimensions for the pit were 3.6 meters along the length, 2.1 meters along the width and depth as 3 meters. Also excavate at least 300 mm deeper at the four corners where the columns will be positioned. When excavating, you have to ensure that the bottom surface of the pit has a slope as it's in the drawing. The drawing clearly shows us that this bottom surface at the inlet side is slightly at a lower level, whereas the outlet surface at a higher level. When excavating, also ensure that the pit is on plumb and straight with no irregular surfaces on the excavated wall sides. Apply anti-termite treatment to the sides and bottom of the pit. The second step is to set out and mark the level of the top slab. After excavation, you have to plan during the early stages where the wall will stop and where the slab will stop, considering the level of pavers and other levels on site. The third step is to set out the position of columns correctly and for this particular septic tank, we used steel bars of Y12. The fourth step is to cast mass concrete here at the bottom of thickness 100 mm with mix ratio 1, 2 to 4 that is 1 part of cement, 2 parts of sand and 4 parts of aggregates. The fifth step is to build the walls. We set out for the walls and build them in the pit with minimum thickness of 200 mm. And for this particular septic tank, we decided to make this first chamber internal distance as 1.68 meters and this second chamber as 1.1 meters. When building these walls, you have to ensure that you build them at the extreme side wall of the pit without leaving any gaps or allowance and that's why proper excavation is always important. On points where you find gaps that need to backfill, do not backfill with soil or marram. Simply put halves of bricks and fill with mortar to have a strong wall that won't fall inside. The mortar mix ratio to build the wall should be 1 to 3, that is, 1 part of cement and 3 parts of sand. Be sure to reinforce the walls with hoop iron after every 3 courses. Build the walls up to half height of the pit and for this case, this was at 1.5 meters. The sixth step is to do steel fixing and foam work for the intermediate ring beam. The depth or thickness of the beam is 200 millimeters. We are using steel bars of Y12 with rings of R8 at a spacing of 150 millimeters center to center. When doing foam work for this beam, only support foam work on the internal side because we shall be casting concrete for the remaining part of the beam. Also do shattering or foam work for the columns only on the inner side. Measure and cut a timber piece to support the column diagonally on one side and also on the other side, then do the same for all columns. The seventh step is to cast concrete for the beam and columns at the same time. The concrete mix ratio we are using here is 1 to 1 and a half to 3 that is 1 part of cement, 1 and a half sand and 3 parts of aggregates and this is how concrete will look like after casting. Do the shattering or removing timber pieces the next day to have something looking like this. 
and right now if you are getting any value from this video kindly hit that subscribe and like button i would really really appreciate let's proceed the next step is to build the walls above the beam similarly build the walls up to the extreme end of the pit lining just like this and for these small gaps fill with halves of bricks and mortar build the wall up to the required level the next activity is to do formwork for the upper part of the columns similarly for this upper part cast concrete with mix ratio one to one and a half to three that is one part of cement one and a half sand and three parts of aggregates when raising this middle wall you have to be strategic about its level but first let me show you how we build it simply cut a wire mesh and tie it around three off cuts of steel bars after that add mortar on top of it and then the bricks on top when building these bricks be sure to leave a hole at the outlet side leave a hole at the middle wall and also a hole at the inlet side the eighth step is to do plastering set out for your gauges for the plaster to ensure that the finished walls are on plumb mix sand and cement in a mixed ratio of one to three that is one part of cement and three parts of sand and apply it to the walls when plastering mix waterproofing powder into the mortar mix we normally use these circuits which are half a kilogram so for example when we were doing plastering flooring and applying the cement paste on the walls we used a total of 11 bags of cement meaning we also used 11 circuits of waterproofing powder the next step which is the most important step is correctly positioning the inlet pipe and the outlet pipe it entirely depends on the levels on site but the inlet pipe must be positioned at least 300 millimeters from the top surface of the last brick on top the bottom surface of the middle hole at 450 millimeters and the outlet at 600 millimeters after the whole work is done the plumber will position a t at the inlet side and also a t at the outlet side the ninth step is to do steel reinforcement and casting concrete for the top slab begin by fixing the bottoms or soffit formwork of the mid span beam provide supports and do general shattering for the slab for this slab we use y16 bars for this mid span beam running along the longer direction of the slab and then y12 bars for all beams above the walls mark the position where manholes or inspection chambers will be dimensions for the manholes will be half a meter by half a meter lay a dpm on top of the timber pieces then fix steel bars for the slab begin with steel bars along the shorter direction as bottom bars then bars along the longer direction next the slab thickness is 150 millimeters if you are sure heavy cars will be passing on top of your septic tank be sure to use a double mat reinforcement like this one for our case here this septic tank is located at the back side of the house and not located along the driveway and no cars will be passing on top of it so we opted for a single mat just like this one it's absolutely fine since we have strong beams bend the overlapping column bars into the slab to create a strong connection this is how our slab will look like after the steel reinforcement the next step is to cast concrete for the top slab use mix ratio one to one and a half to three that is one part of cement one and a half sand and three parts of aggregates be sure to vibrate the concrete for the slab to have a strong concrete Cut off the excess concrete with a metallic square pipe or timber on top of the concrete to have a smooth surface finish. The next morning, here is our final product. After building the septic tank, the tenth step which is the last step is to build the sock pit. The way we build a sock pit is so simple. Simply excavate the pit depending on the number of users and for this particular sock pit it had a diameter of 1.7 meters and a depth of 4.6 meters this pipe must be a 160 millimeters diameter heavy duty pvc pipe usually with 3 millimeters thickness simply cut small holes around the pvc pipe carefully with an axo blade these holes help to distribute the liquid sewage evenly within the sock pit the next step is to cover hard core with a polythene sheeting and then cover with maram on top later when laying pavers this remaining part will be cut to flush the level of pavers 
the next step is shattering or removing the timber inside the septic tank. After 28 days, when the slab has fully dried, carefully remove the timber pieces and the props inside the pit and also clean inside. You also have to fix manhole covers. Lastly, you have to do plumbing. When doing plumbing, you have to ensure that only sewage from the toilet enters the septic tank. Any other wastewater from the house should go directly to the soak pit without passing through the septic tank. In summary, when building a septic tank, the first step is to excavate the pit for the septic tank and the pit for the soak way. The second step is to mark the correct levels of the top slab and the level where the bricks will stop. The third step is to set out the positions for the columns correctly. The fourth step is to cast concrete at the bottom of the pit. The fifth step is to build the walls. The sixth step is to do steel fixing and casting concrete for the mid ring beam and columns at the same time. The seventh step is to build the walls above the beams. The eighth step is to do plastering, flooring and finishing the walls. The ninth step is to cast concrete for the top slab. The tenth step, which is the last step, is to build a soak pit and finally do the plumbing work. And that's how we build our septic tank with two chambers from start to finish. In case you have any questions about septic tanks, be sure to ask me in the comment section. i reply you immediately. And by the way, if you'd like to buy the drawings and the BOQ for your septic tank project, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Click on this video here on the right to know how septic tanks work.